Defying feet that terrified even Houdini. Performed over a thousand times by the master magician of them all, again the great Voltaire. Corporal, will you step closer, please? Yes, sir. Your name? Uh, uh, Harry Adams. Do you have your weapon with you, Corporal? Yes, sir. Will you please examine it to make sure it is not loaded? It has not been out of your hands? No, sir. Fine. Now, the bullet you brought. Please give it to my assistant. Will someone in the audience please mark the bullet for identification? And load your gun. Yes, sir. We will now take places at the opposite sides of the stage. Yes, sir. I will now count down from five. When I begin, the corporal will aim at my mouth. When I say zero, he will fire. Then, I will catch the bullet between my teeth. Ready? Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Shane is brought to you tonight by Oldsmobile. In behalf of Oldsmobile quality dealers everywhere who have the hot numbers for 61, 98, Super 88, Dynamic 88, and the new size Olds in the low price field F85. You happen to be here, Mike. All in the name of charity, Will. Lucy bought the tickets from one of her friends. So you had ringside seats for him? Mm hmm. And no client involved. Mr. Gentry, one of your men said that you wanted to see me. I'm Ned Webster. It's Miss Emily Talon. Her club sponsored the event. Miss Talon, Mr. Webster, Mike Shane. This is a terrible thing. You're the theater manager. Yes, I am. Perhaps you can tell me where the soldier came from. I wish I knew. I only handled the business end of it. Boltain handled his show personally, or he let his wife do it. His wife? That's right. She goes under the name of Kara. 
Well, you saw in the act tonight. I've got a pickup out for Corporal Adams. He won't get far in uniform. Any other questions? Oh, no, that's all. Thank you. Oh, uh, one thing. Where's Mrs. Voltaine now? In her dressing room. I sent for her doctor. Thank you. Let's see if I can talk to her. You the doctor Mrs. Voltaine called? Yes, I'm Dr. Harris. Will Gentry, homicide. Mike Shane. How do you do? How is she? She's in shock. I'd like to take her to my rest home until she can recover. Oh, well, where's that? Here's the address. All right. Let me know when I can talk to her. Of course. Thank you. It'll be a little while before I can move her. Well, could have been an accident, I guess. Something fouls up the trick. Soldier gets scared and runs. You'll know when you find him and the gun. What about the bullet that killed Voltaine? Couldn't locate it. It went right through him. The size of the wound looked like a 45. Tried to follow the path of the bullet. This old place is so full of cracks and holes. Be lucky if we ever find it. Oh. Did find this, though. Bullet N. Mm hmm. Marked with the letter N. Yeah. Hasn't been fired. Not the murder bullet, so it doesn't help as much. You ready, Mike? Lucy and I have been waiting for 20 minutes. Am I, Will? Yeah, I guess I can muddle through without you. See you later. Come on. You get started. Well, how do you expect me to get any sleep? I'm going to keep wondering about how that trick was supposed to be worked. Well, well that's simple. He just... Hey. I'm Gus Hartman. You remember me? Oh, sure. Voltaine's assistant. What can I do for you? Well... Oh, you can talk in front of him. Well, I'd like to hire you, Mr. Shane. Hire me? Why? To find out who killed Voltaine. What makes you so sure it wasn't an accident? Well, that trick's a cinch. Look, I've been with him five years, and we've been doing that bullet catching act a thousand times. It's never failed. It did tonight. Sure. You want to know why? Because of that wife of his. You think Caro was responsible? She's hated him for years. So tonight she did something about it. She collapsed right after it happened. What do you expect? She's an actress. She knew she could count on that doctor playing along. What did uh, Dr. Harris have to do with it? Plenty. He's in love with her. But it's a traveling act. When would he see her? In the winter, we're based in Miami. So she goes to his rest home to consultation. She probably hasn't told him about the others. These others? Was the soldier one of them? I don't know. Probably. What about Voltaine? Did he know his wife was playing around? It's hard to say. I didn't tell him if that's what you mean. It's none of my business. But he was a good man, Mr. Shane. And he was my friend. You think his wife killed him? It had to be her. But she was the only one beside the soldier who could have switched a real bullet for that blank. And I want you to find out. Of course, I haven't got any money now. I'll have to dig some up. Yeah, we'll talk about that later. For now, let's just say I'll look into it. Thank you. Good night. Oh, he doesn't like Mrs. Voltaine very much. Either that, or he likes her too much. Why? What do you mean? She's probably jilted a few men in her time. Maybe Gus was one of them. He sure seems bitter about her. All right, where are we going now? Back to the theater. Good. After I dropped you off. Why? I'm not tired. You know what they say about early to bed and early to rise. Makes a good milkman. <clears throat> Come on.
I had absolutely nothing to do with it. You believe that, don't you, Arthur? Yes, I believe it. I can't answer questions now. They find out about you and me, they'll... they'll implicate the both of us. They won't bother you here. At least not for a while. are here to see you, Doctor. Doctor? I didn't expect you tonight, Mr. Gentry. I thought she might have come around by now. I had to give her a sedative. How long will it last? Well, it's difficult to say. She's extremely high-strung, very emotional. Seeing her own husband shot down before her eyes. Have you caught the soldier yet? No, but it's only a question of time. I'll leave a man here. Why, I'll be here. Her husband's death might have been an accident. In case it wasn't, I don't want anything happening to her. I see. You'll let me know as soon as she's ready to be talked to? Of course. Good night, Doctor. to understand my position, Miss Talent. The accident tonight cuts off the two performances that pay my percentage. That's very unfortunate, Mr. Webster. But what am I supposed to do? We have a contract with you. Well, contracts are flexible if you want them to be. You seem to forget that this is for charity. Charity begins at home. The least you can do is give me a cut off I'm the top. I'm sorry. Well, don't you think you're being completely unfair? I'll expect the total proceeds tomorrow. Good night, Mr. Webster. Aren't you? Just protecting my interests, Mr. Shane. Mind if I ask a few questions? I have already answered far too many from the police. Mine might be a little different. I doubt it. But if you must. Who booked Valtaine's act for this benefit? A regular talent agency, Talent Incorporated. Who suggested it? I did. I saw him perform in New York six months ago, and I felt that he could draw a good crowd for our annual charity. Well, why would you say... Mr. Shane, I'm very tired. Since you're not acting in any, shall we say, official capacity, I'll have to say good night. like that sort. And you don't? No. Cold as ice. Charity. I don't know why I get mixed up in deals like this. Who hired this theater? The Dolphin Sports Club. Miami's female athletes. Female. In hand-to-hand -hand combat, you and I wouldn't have a chance. Take Miss Talon. What about her? Well, ever since I let her talk me into booking this affair into my theater, she's been on my neck. Romantically? That's a good one. All I know is she hung around here so much, she drove everybody nuts. Still, she's attractive. Yeah, she's all yours. Oh, Webster, was Valtaine interested in any woman, other than his wife, I mean? You know, from what I've heard, his wife was the only woman he wasn't interested in. Good night.
measured for your comfort. The 1961 Oldsmobile. The full-sized, full-value car for the buyer who wants something better. Here's comfort and convenience you can measure in feet and inches and deep down satisfaction. With its spacious new entryway and new chair height seats, you enter and sit with new ease. Relax in luxurious foam cushion comfort. Tunnel size has been reduced. You ride three abreast with no crowding. There's more room at the top, too. And more space all around for spacious, gracious relaxation. There's more luggage convenience, too. With a new deep well trunk design for easier upright loading. This extra measure of comfort can be yours in Oldsmobile for 61. In the dollar-saving Dynamic 88, Spirited Super 88, and 98. Now at your Oldsmobile quality dealers. Good morning, Angel. Good morning. Ah, just what I need, some black coffee. Didn't you sleep last night? Not much. What little I got was uh, forced on me. What happened? You know, there's nothing the coffee won't cure. I'll bring it in. <laughs> Tim's waiting for you. At this hour? <laughs> Hi, Mike. I hope you don't mind my turning your couch into a bed. I'm so tired the sheep are counting me. Uh, where were you all night? Uh, covering a Voltaine killing. Any leads? Zero. I figured I'd come by and pick your brains. Be a waste of time, Tim. Right now, I'm dry. Room service. Thanks, Angel. I brought some for you, too, Tim. Oh, let's alone. Well, you better taste it before we start making plans. Isn't that the plate that Carrie used in the act last night? Mm-hmm. Well, do you know how the trick works? Gus Hartman explained it to me this morning. Now, watch. Here we have a live bullet. Bring it to you on the plate, like so. You mark it. Now, on my way back to the stage, I simply press the bullet with my thumb, like so. And it falls through this little opening in the plate into the palm of my hand. But what did Kara give to the soldier? A blank. She had it hidden in her hand right from the beginning. Now, while the soldier was getting ready to shoot, Carrie did two things. First, she took the marked slug out of its shell. How'd she do that? Well, it's always loosened before the air. And second, she slipped it to vaulting as she walked past it. Now, while everybody was watching the soldier, no one noticed. Then vaulting put the bullet in his mouth when he pretended he was brushing his hair back. So that's how it was done. Well, that's how it was supposed to be done. Something evidently went wrong. Where'd you get that? Found it in Voltaine's dressing room last night, after visiting ours. I also found a very interesting scrapbook. But then somebody clobbered me. When I came to, it was gone. What was in the scrapbook? Oh, typical. Uh, newspaper clippings, pictures of himself, and women. Women? Women? You know, something's been bugging me about this Voltaine character all night. Now I think I know what it is. Women. Anything I should know? Maybe. Well, let's have it. All right. A few years ago, there was a famous magician named Voltaine. Now, there was another magician named Zambroni. Voltaine was a ladies' man. Zambroni had a very attractive wife. The inevitable happened, and uh, there was a scandal. Zambroni. Yeah, he tried to kill Voltaine with his bare hands, but he didn't quite make it. Then Voltaine skipped town. Zambroni retired. I think he lives right here in Miami. Last night, Gentry found the bullet that was used in the trick. It was marked by that man we saw in the theater. The initial was an N. So? N. Z. For Zambroni. Could be. Could be what? Hi, Dick. Could be you're about to leave on an errand. Errand? I just got here. Nothing's permanent, my boy, especially around the Shane office. Zambroni, Angelo. Runs a magic shop on Tracy Road, Miami. Oh, Angel, I don't know what I'd do without you. 
Well, you heard her, Dick. Take a run over to that address and see what you can find out. Here, take my car. All right. Only too glad to help. What am I looking for? See if Zambroni was the man we saw initial that bullet last night. All right. Oh, wait a minute. I'll go with you. I've got some checking of my own to do. What checking? Dr. Harris, the man that's taking care of Voltaine's wife. He interests me. That makes two of us. I'll let you know if there's a skeleton in the closet. Richard? Well, I'm glad you asked for coffee. Hmm? You haven't touched a drop. That's because suddenly I'm wide awake. Homicide, Gentry. Hi, Will. Mike Shane. What is it, Mike? I was just wondering if uh, you'd turn up that soldier yet. No, he's still AWOL. I'm on my way out to the Army post now. What company? Well, why the sudden interest? Because now I'm officially involved. You see, Gus Hartman hired me to find the killer. No faith in the police department. Everybody's a critic. All right, I'll meet you in 15 minutes. Uh, but just because you saw the soldier and can make an identification. Okay? Jackson. Get my car out front, will you? for my customers. Can I help you? Uh, yeah, I'm looking for a trick for a friend or something. Yeah. What would you like? Uh, a tie box? Uh, linking rings? Sleight of hand? I'm not sure. Well, here's my catalog. 500 effects. Take your choice. Oh, all right. What interests you? It says here that you used to be a magician. <laughs> not for quite some time. Big shows went out with Thurston and Keller. Oh, really? Yeah. Say, isn't there a magician in town now? Uh, what's his name? The Great Voltaine? I wouldn't know. I don't follow the profession anymore. Oh, then you didn't see a show. Young man, do you want to buy something or don't you? Yeah. Hi, Mr. Zambroni. Is Bruno here? No, George, I haven't seen him. Oh. Well, do you know where he is? I can't keep track of my son anymore. If he calls, I'll tell him we're here. All right, thanks a lot. He's probably still with that soldier. I thought you wanted something. Yeah, I think I found it. Excuse me. My name is Dick Hamilton. I couldn't help overhearing your conversation with Mr. Zambroni. Are you a friend of Bruno's? In a way, yes. Uh, you're looking for Bruno, aren't you? That's right. And when I find him, I'm going to wring his neck. But he and that, that soldier friend of his ruined a perfectly good party last night. Well, you may think I have a head full of rocks, but there's somebody I'd like you to meet. What? His name's Michael Shane, and it's really very important. Well, I don't understand. Well, your friend Bruno is in a lot of trouble. And I think I can help you find him. But how could you? Wait a minute. I have an honest face, haven't I? Oh, yes, but... All right, then trust me. Come on, I'll explain on the way. Well, that's about all I can tell you, gentlemen. You say this soldier gave his name as Harry Adams. We have a Corporal Adams who's AWOL. He's been gone a day now. A good record up to now. Yes. All right, have him bring it right in. This is Adams' ID picture. I saw him before. This isn't the man who shot Baltane last night. So you see, Lou, 
Lucy, Harry Adams isn't Harry Adams. Now, what did we hear from Operator Bongo? He's on his way out to see you, with a surprise. What kind of a surprise? The female kind. Says he'll meet you at the front gate of the post. Thanks, Angel. Well, that's great. We've got an AWOL soldier with the right name. The only trouble is he's the wrong guy. Everyone else is accounted for, Mr. Gentry. I know. Thanks for your cooperation, sir. Coming, Mike? Well, I think I'll stick around the post. This uh, military life kind of appeals to me. <laughs> Look out, they don't draft you. Goodbye, sir. Zambroni's magic shop. Hello, Georgia. Dick's told me a lot about you, Mr. Shane. Don't know how I'd get along without him. I think Georgia can help us, Mike. Oh, fine. I think we better head back for town. I've been dating Bruno Zambroni for a few months now, but, well, last week we had sort of a falling out. He's been seeing an older woman. You know who she is? Cara Voltaine. Bruno and his father had a terrible fight about it. Bruno even left home. Well, what about Cara? Does she like him? Oh, of course not. Bruno's just a little boy. Compared to her, that is. Tell him about last night. Well, some friends and I were having a cookout down at the beach. You know, hot dogs and stuff like that. When Bruno came up with this... this staggering character. Yeah, it was a friend of his, and the friend was drunk. Oh, boy, was I mad. And I told Bruno, you just get him out of here. After all, the hostess is a friend of my family. Well, anyway, he did. It was disgraceful. In uniform, too. Now, wait a minute. Let's get this straight. Who was in uniform? Bruno's friend. He was a soldier. He said his name was Harry Adams. Well, does it help, Mike? Quite a bit. What does this Bruno look like? Oh, he's very good looking. About six foot tall, black hair, dreamy brown eyes. And he's the boy who fired that shot last night. He must have taken Adam's uniform. Oh, tell me about the hotel. Well, when Bruno left the party with this, you know, his friend, he said he was going to take him to the Forest Hotel to sleep it off. Dick, I want to drop you off at the office. And get in touch with Gentry and tell him everything we know. All right. so far, haven't I? Sooner or later, they'll find out about Bruno. He'll tell them everything. Does it really matter? There's no proof against you. Glad to see you've recovered, Mrs. Valtain. What are you doing here? Just dropped in to have a little chat with your patient, now that she's up and around. I'm sorry, but she isn't well enough to talk yet. Funny, she was doing a pretty good job of it when I came in. Tell me about Bruno Zambroni, Mrs. Voltaine. I must insist it's that you... It's all right. Bruno is a close friend. Nothing more? Certainly not. Why was he at the theater last night? We needed a soldier for the bullet catching act. Bruno said he knew one. That was Harry Adams, but he got drunk at a beach party before the performance. Yes, I know. Bruno called and told me. So you had him change clothes with Adams and then come down to the theater with Adams' gun. Well, it, it was an emergency and 
Bruno did me a favor. Know where he is? No. No, I haven't seen him since last night. I'm sorry, Mr. Shane. That's enough. She needs a rest. All right. You'd better get plenty of it. Because as soon as Gentry finds out you're better, his questions will be a lot tougher than mine. Michael Shade's office. Hi, Angel. Oh, Mike, I have a message. Look, uh, hold it for a minute. I want you to call Gentry and tell him that Mrs. Voltaine is ready for questioning. Okay, Mike. Now your client called. Yes, Hartman. Yes, and he'd like to see you as soon as possible. He'll be backstage at the theater. And Tim phoned in. He has some information on Dr. Harris. Where's Tim now? At Gentry's office, until further notice. I'll see him after I've talked to Gus. Thanks, Angel. This is kind of abrupt, but... Yeah, you seem a little nervous. What are you trying to tell me? Well, I want you to stop working on the case. Oh? Any uh, particular reason? I was wrong last night. The whole thing was an accident. No sense stirring up any trouble. I see. No smoke and no fire. Right, Gus? Well, I realize you've done some work already. Will 500 cover it? Cover it or bury it? I don't know what you mean. I think you do. Tell me something, Gus. How much do you hate Mrs. Voltaine? Plenty. Enough to kill her husband and frame her for murder? Voltaine was my friend. Then why are you trying to buy me off the case? And where did you get all that money? I don't have to tell you anything. You just forget it. All right, Gus, whatever you say. You're no longer my client. But you might be a murderer. of a hurricane. What could I do? He wouldn't take the money. It's because you didn't offer him enough. Money can buy anything. It didn't buy Voltaine. No. But it bought you. to double the beauty of any room with a high-fidelity mirror made of twin ground polished plate glass from PPG. Isn't this room attractive? But take away the mirror and you can see the difference. Not only does the high-fidelity mirror make the room more attractive, but it's lighter with an air of spaciousness. Your entrance hall can be lighter too and a lot more useful when you add a high-fidelity door mirror. You'll love its convenience. Going out or coming in, you can check yourself from head to toe. You'll find high-fidelity mirrors at furniture and apartment stores or your glass dealer. And always look for this PPG high-fidelity label. It assures a truly high-fidelity reflection. Because it's made of twin-ground polished plate glass from PPG, you get the most accurate image possible. True line and color. The best in glass from Pittsburgh Plate Glass Company, PPG.
Hello, Webster. Just put up the closing notice. Oh, saddest thing in the world, shutting down a the theater. You know, in the old days, there were touring companies, Shakespeare. My father and I used to have this place booked solid every night. And now? I'm lucky to get a house full of termites. Baltain was a pretty good attraction, wasn't he? Sure. Great. First one I had in months. So what happens? He gets himself killed. And any profits I had coming were killed along with him. You told me Emily Talon hung around the show a lot. Think she might have been interested in Gus Hartman? Gus? Never. Now, oh, Emily Talon's so snooty she doesn't even like herself. Talons talk only to the Poindexters, and the Poindexters talk only to themselves. Still, she's a woman. You want to talk about a woman, you talk about Carol Voltaine. Rather talk about her husband. Everybody seems to have a different idea. Saint or sinner? Strictly sinner. He just stayed married to Kara so that other dames wouldn't bother him. Their marriage was a mutual loathing society. You're pretty fond of Kara, aren't you? Yes, I am. Oh, not enough to kill her husband. Nobody suggested murder. Might have been an accident. Sure. And I'm Flo Ziegfeld. Look, friend, you want to ask any more questions? You come back at 2 o'clock because uh, I got to head down to the bank, pay off the lady athlete. Give her my regards. She'd rather have money. <laughs> Don't you have a home? I'm a gypsy, Will. I go where the news goes. You won't find any news around here. We haven't turned up much. It's only temporary, Will. Mike! Well, before you two gentlemen go into conference, do you mind stepping into my parlor? Has Dick called you? Yeah, thanks. He filled us in on Zambroni, and we found the soldier at the Forest Hotel. And? Uh, Corporal Adams doesn't know any more about the murder than Tim does. Hey, now, wait a minute. Uh, we turned him over to the MPs. He was still sleeping off a big night when we found him. Last thing he remembers is something about being on a beach party with Bruno. That's who we're looking for now. And the soldier didn't do the shooting? No. He just remembers vaguely that his pal sneaked into the room, dropped his uniform and gun on the floor, and that's all. So Bruno took advantage of an opportunity to be with Kara Voltaine. Maybe. And maybe the kid was jealous and decided to grab the chance to get rid of her husband. Well, you're right back where you started. All you have to do now is catch Bruno. Have you talked to Kara yet? Oh, I haven't had a chance. I'm on my way out there now. Oh, that reminds me, Will. Her doctor's a fake. I looked him up in our records. He deals in herbs, nature cures, and women. You sure? Positive. Just ask to see his license sometime. Ten to one is from a diploma mill. Mm -hmm. uh, you care to come along? No, thanks. I've got a few other things to do. Hello. That's for you. Switch it to 271. You can take it outside. Hello. Yeah, Mike. Lucy told me I'd probably find you there. Now, listen. I went back to Zambroni's, and I sneaked into the back, and I caught him hiding something in a drawer. You see what it was? Uh, yeah, it looked like a book. Anyway, he sure looked guilty about it. And he saw me, he threw me out. Good going. Now, do me a favor. You know Gus Hartman. Get him to the theater at 2 o'clock. I'll just tell him it involves Voltaine. He'll be there. Am I going to get a story out of this? Sure. Check out Emily Talon for me. And the Dolphin Sports Club might be a good place to start. Where will you be? Trying to pull a rabbit out of a hat. That's right. I'm sorry, the shop is closed. You are a detective? I'd like to talk to you. All right. This way, please.
Now, what is it that you want? Just a few questions, Mr. Zambroni. With a very attractive woman. Your wife? Yes. Is she here? No. She died a few years ago. That was just after she met Valtain, wasn't it? So you know about that. I also know about your son. The police are looking for him right now. Bruno? Why? They think he killed Valtain. Oh, no. Bruno did nothing wrong, except to fall in love with that woman. You didn't approve of that, did you? I know her. She's like a husband. She had no feeling for my son. Give her pleasure to play games with him. Why were you in the theater last night? I went to talk to her about Bruno. During the show, she mocked me. She gave me the bullet to mark. And what did you do then? Slip out of your seat and shoot, Valtaine? No, 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 no. If you didn't, your son did. All right. There's no use lying. I killed him. But why Valtaine? His wife was the one you were after this time. <laughs> None of this makes any difference anymore. I told you I killed him. What more do you want? Mr. Zambroni. Will Gentry, Miami Police. So you followed me? Naturally. When you didn't want to come to Dr. Harris's, I figured you had something more important on your mind. Well, Mr. Zambroni just confessed. He's your killer. Is that true? Of course it is. No, it's not. Who are you? Bruno Zambroni. No, my no. father's lying to you. It had nothing to do with this murder. No, I killed all Please, Bruno, I shot him please. because of what he did to my father. That made it convenient, knowing how you feel about Kara. Were you the one that slugged me last night? Yes, yes, I'm sorry about that. The scrapbook had clippings about my mother and Voltaine. I, I thought if the police found it, they'd come after my father. You have the scrapbook here? Let me see it, please. Thank you. Well, that's a Nova. had nothing on Voltaine. Somebody took a picture out of this. Or else Valtain destroyed it. Do you know who's missing? No. I'll have to keep this, Mr. Zambroni. Mike, a couple of questions. Was he in the audience last night? The row right in front of me. Would he have left his seat and fired a gun? Not a chance. I was watching him just before the trick. I, I thought you killed him. I would have done it years ago, my son, if I wanted to. Bruno, which bullet did you use? Well, the one Cara brought me on the plate. But it was a blank. Uh, she told me earlier it Now, wait a minute. You just said you killed Valtain. Only because I thought my father did. Forgive me. <laughs> I suspected you all along. Well, let's suppose, and I just said suppose, that Bruno did fire a blank. And how was Valtain shot? Killer could have been in the balcony or in the wings. He could have used another gun of the same caliber. Ah, the audience only heard one shot. Or two shots fired at the same time. Don't forget, Will, there was a countdown. The killer knew just when to shoot. Well, that's not a bad theory. Only thing missing is the name of the killer. Uh, you got any suggestions for me? Not just yet. Are you picking up uh, Mrs. Valtain and Dr. Harris? They should be in my office right now. Well, as soon as you're through with them, meet me at the theater. Why? I'm going to try to perform a trick without mirrors. Bruno, did Kara ever mention that uh, there were other women in Valtaine's life? Sure, as many as the pages in that scrapbook. She said none of them lasted, though. The longest was only six months. Uh, Casanova was fickle. Thanks, Bruno, Mr. Zambroni. Let's go. Lucy, it's Mike. Any word from Tim? Oh, good enough. Thank him for me. Hey, Mike. I've been looking all over for you. Is Gus here? Yeah, he's on the stage waiting for you. Anybody with him? Yeah, Miss Talon and Webster. Thanks, Dick. See you later. Right. I don't see why you refuse to accept a check. Very simple, Mr. Webster. Cash won't bounce. Glad you trust me. You know, this money is for charity. I don't want to take any chances. Well, maybe you'd better count it. I intend to. 
Well, it seems like a lot of cash is changing hands today. What are you doing here? Just browsing. I like the smell of grease paint. Shane, I told you to get off this case. And you flashed quite a roll to back it up. Last night you were broke and out of a job, and today your pockets are bulging with cash. Who's your benefactor? None of your business. Were you paid to kill Voltaine? If he was, he's got something coming from me. You stay out of this. Sorry, friend. Consider me in. The one who fired that shot cost me a lot of money. Bad guess, Webster. Gus was on stage in view of the audience when Voltaine was killed. He couldn't have pulled a gun. That leaves you. Not me. I was in the box office counting receipts. Ask a ticket girl. Gus, I'll ask you for the last time. Where did you get that money? You seem to know all the answers. Then I'll tell you. Or will you save me the trouble, Miss Talon? I don't know what you're talking about. Gus was bleeding you because he knew one fact. You had an affair with Valtine. Ridiculous. Me and a cheap magician? Exactly. And you were ashamed of it. That's why you paid Gus to keep it quiet. But there's a slander. You told me yourself you saw Voltaine's show six months ago. And Bruno said Voltaine's last romance lasted only six months. Well, what does that prove? That he was trying to throw you over. You have a lot of pride, Miss Talon. And to be rejected by one social inferior is not pleasant. How could I possibly have killed him? Simple. You just stood in the wings behind Bruno and fired when he did. Only you weren't using blanks. You mean she's that good a shot? The Dolphin Club isn't limited to sports like yachting and golf. They also indulge in skeet shooting, and Miss Talon happens to be their champion. Her record was printed in Tim Rourke's newspaper. I'll see you in court for this. I'm sure you will. Mind if I take a look at your handbag? Of course I mind. Why do you want it? Because I think you're concealing a gun, and the police have a bullet from it. The bullet that killed Voltaine. No. I'm sure you're familiar with the science of ballistics, Miss Talon. Your bag, please. Miss Talon! Glad you got here. I've been in the wings since you started talking. Why'd you wait so long? A dramatic effect. We're in a theater, remember? Oh, by the way, uh, we haven't found the murder bullet yet. I knew it, but Miss Talon didn't. One of the secrets of magic will never tell the audience the truth. <laughs> when you're a private eye, you're working at it all the time. You try to size up people and, like a photograph, fix them in your mind. Here's a man on the way up, wants the best. His wife, a trained eye for value. The plot, check the scene. Here's the full-size clue. The 1961 Dynamic 88 Oldsmobile. Husband checking facts. Delighted at Oldsmobile's great inside roominess. Up, down, sideways. Easy getting in and out, too. Wife checks interior. Finds the luxury touch at a budget price. Fashion line design, inside and out. Husband on the lookout for economy. Finds it up front discovers regular gas rocket engine with zoom like never before. And with the Econaway carburetor, saves about a dollar a fill. Item, new hydromatic with accelerator action. For more go, there's the fiery skyrocket engine, optional on the Dynamic 88. It even looks hot. It's an open and shut case. Nothing can beat the Dynamic 88's full size and power. That's the picture for 61. Check the facts yourself. Thanks, Mike. Who took that picture from Voltaine's scrapbook? It was a picture of Emily Talon. Gus took it, right after he hired me. That's when he started blackmailing her, and their next step was to try to call me off. Oh, did Gentry release Bruno? After a stiff lecture. I think he's going to take over his father's store. Oh, one last thing. What about Carol Voltaine? Ah, she became Mrs. Harris and moved up north. Alone. Alone? What kind of a honeymoon is that? Yeah, she'll just have to wait until Harris finishes his sentence. But he won't be alone. He'll have Gus for company. Well, I guess that's it. You certainly wrapped up this case like uh, magic. Someone mentioned magic? 
I don't believe it. Your attention, please, ladies and gentlemen. The great Hamilton is about to perform one of the most amazing feats of prestidigitation. Now watch carefully. Watch carefully, gentlemen. And now... Hello, Mr. Shane. How do you like that? That's a very cute trick. Hey, Dick, how much you want for the cape? There's just no telling when that wonderful someone may walk into your life. Be prepared for moments like this by always being sure your breath is fresh. Just take this simple precaution. Reach for Listerine and get protection in depth against bad breath. Listerine stops bad breath four times better than toothpaste. The reason is that germs all over the mouth and throat cause most bad breath. Toothpaste covers only this small area. But the Listerine way, the recommended way, gives protection in depth, covers four times as much bad breath area, kills germs toothpaste doesn't even reach. And Listerine is twice as wet as water, penetrates into crevices which water, much less toothpaste, cannot enter. Get protection you can count on against bad breath. Reach for Listerine Antiseptic and get protection in depth today. Listerine Antiseptic. Here are some exciting moments from next week's Michael Shane mystery. I don't have to answer that question, Mr. Shane. I know why you lied to the police, Dave, but you can tell Mr. Shane the truth. I don't know what she's talking about. He's trying to save me the humiliation. He spent most of the evening with Belle Carson. That true, Mr. Barstow? You didn't have to say that, Elaine. You see, he's going to hire you to get evidence on Dave and Belle so that he can divorce her. Don't listen to him, Mr. Shane, please. Don't listen to him. Mrs. Barstow, I don't get it. You want to protect the woman you say is running off with your husband? Don't you see? If he divorces her, then she's going to be free. Free to really take Dave away from me. I'll pay you anything you want, Mr. Shane, only just don't help William Carson. Lucy? Uh, hi. If you want him, you have to pay. And you have to pay plenty. So that's the pitch. Bargain day for husbands. There's only one thing standing in your way, Belle. That's me. Don't you know what time it is? Yes, and I also know what the score is. Two husbands, Belle. Add them up. What are you talking about? That guy who slugged me. That was Watson, wasn't it? Your first husband. I looked up the marriage license. No divorces and no previous condition of widowhood. That's crazy. No, no, that's bigamy. No, no, you've got it all wrong. <laughs> Michael Shane is brought to you tonight by Oldsmobile. In behalf of Oldsmobile quality dealers everywhere who have the hot numbers for 61, 98, Super 88, Dynamic 88, and the new size Olds in the low price field, F85.